one thing that's Asian that needs a raise right now is Jack's tank top. Jack's tank top <laughs> needs a raise. <laughs> if Netflix has to pay American prices for the Korean content, does that mean they'll still want it? Because it's part of the appeal, the fact that Netflix is getting a good deal. Yeah, we got to talk about it. This is going viral in a couple entertainment circles today. Joining us, we got Jack Liang. What up, what up? Um, long story short, Andrew, the Squid Game lead, Lee Jung Jae, is requesting $1 million per episode for Squid Game Season 2. Um, also, the Squid Game creator, Andrew, it came out that he gets no residuals despite the original series earning Netflix $900 million. And of course, Andrew, Netflix is investing over the next period of time $2.5 billion in Korean content. That's $2.5 billion. Right. Now, we all know that Korean content is really good, but part of the reason why Netflix is so invested in the Korean content is because they get a really high return on investment because it's cheaper to make over there. I'm not saying it's dirt cheap, but it's 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 a fraction of the cost. Yeah, I think we got to remember, right? These are, as much as they are content businesses and entertainment businesses, What's the key word? They're just businesses. Right. They want to see ROI. Here, let me just give you some quick stats, Andrew. $58 million per episode for Lord of the Rings on Amazon. $15 million an episode for Game of Thrones. 2.4 million per episode of Squid Game Season 1. Oh, wow. Which one do you think had the most ROI? I mean, it's definitely Squid Games. But now I can see the main character is asking for a million. That's quite a bit. Yeah, that's going to up that $2.4 million per but, episode. But I average. would say Lee Jung Jae's request of a million from his original salary for season one, which was about 250 k that to me is not that big of a jump. Right, because it's just 4X. a 4X jump. That's 4X, which is like, it's more, it's a price jump, but it's like, I guess what they're probably afraid of is that it's going to make all the other actors request a higher rate too. But I think he's one of the only returning actors. Honestly, he's one of two. Right. Oh, wow. I think that Lee Jung Jae, I think maybe what they are afraid of on the Netflix side is this is just going to up the price and lower the ROI equation for all co uh, Korean content moving forward right. for the next couple decades. Right. It's right. like if you give one employee a raise, everyone's going to start asking for raises. Exactly, yeah. exactly. All right, let's get into the comment section. Oh, by the way, please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys as we get into these. Somebody said, so the star of the incredibly profitable show just wants a raise? That totally makes sense. The show can't really move forward without him he has all the leverage yeah i don't know if he has all the leverage because there's another comment that kind of explains this he's like well the show made him a star and the show obviously incorporated a bunch of other people in it and you need the writers and the production and all of this this guy lee jung jay is not quite like a brad pitt or tom cruise level type star although he is a star so no he can't necessarily demand that much what well do you think I think it has to do with, like, the Eastern perception with the Western perception. I'm not saying that Lee Jung Jae was at his peak in Korea, but he was a pre-existing star. Mm. Like, he had money and stuff, you know? Is he, like, the Brad Pitt equivalent in Korea? Oh, uh, man, to be honest, I heard it was, like, more, like, possibly, like, a Liam Neeson. You know what I mean? Like, somebody who has had a great storied career, but it brought him back. Uh, but regardless, I think him asking a million per episode actually makes sense, and I think it's fair for him to ask that. It's also, like, fair... Just to get it done, if he takes like 600K, 750K an episode, I still think that that's more realistically of what they give him. But honestly, guys, you know, um, at the end of the season finale of Seinfeld, they were all making a million per episode, or at least Seinfeld was. Right. And that oh, was Seinfeld, like, and that's was a like, comedy. And this was oh, wow. like, what, decades ago? Yeah, yeah that was like decades ago when ago. a million then is probably like essentially 1.8 million at now. Least, and, and honestly, this goes to our discussion about valuing Asian talent, even though they're bringing in the ROI. Are they going to pay them like Western talent, or are they going to put Asians more in that, like, we're providing the value slot? I right. mean, with that $2.5 investment, I think they're going to start getting paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think people so? deserve it. But yeah. but do you think, Jack, in your opinion, do you think like if you're an Asian creator or I guess like the movie maker in this sense, like you're still going to take the lower deal for the business just because it's like business is growing. And regardless, if you're making that much, you're just like, yo, I just want to keep the uh, cash flow. Well, that little amount is still a lot in Korea or Asia or wherever it is. Right. Com it's not compared to the U.S. It's compared to where they live. Right, you're saying everything is relative, and I relative. think that I hope that those um, 
that profit distribution increase goes all the way down to like the gaffers and the PAs. Because right. as we all know, we've all been to Asia. We've all done some work in Asia. They definitely do not pay the lower level people right. that well. The cleaners. Yeah, the, the, yeah we, they don't have a union in, in, in you, Asia. You know, I'll, I'll say one thing, one thing that's Asian that needs a raise right now. Is Jack's tank top? Jack's tank top needs a raise. <laughs> as what? far as uh, ownership of the IP goes, Andrew, a lot of people are like, "Man, just because he accepts the contract that he signed, it doesn't make it right." This kind of crap is why the Writers Guild Association is striking right now. What happened to the Squid Games creator mm -hmm. or, or the writer of the initial series? Yeah. They're saying he's getting screwed because he signed a contract with streaming where it gives him no points and no residuals despite it being a 20X, 100X success. And they're also saying because in the traditional like industry like Hollywood, he would get residuals because streaming works differently than Hollywood. It has different well. rules. Right, than movies uh, released in theaters. Yeah, I guess, how are you guys' feelings on this? He signed a contract. Obviously, contracts are there for a reason to protect usually the bigger dog. Uh, but I guess, how wrong is it? Because usually bonus incentives are not really built into... Uh, Entertainment like that. Yeah. I mean, Huang Diong Hook, Hyuk, I'm sorry I'm for mispronouncing the name. He did come out and say, I have not been given any sort of like bonus. Mm. Be Like I've only been paid what was in the contract. Mm. Um, is it right? Is it wrong? Is it just how we do things here? I'm sure in Korea, had he got that amount of profit, they would have broke him off like a little bit of just a, a goodwill bonus. Right. But I guess in America, they were more sticking to the legality of yeah. it. I don't know what their negotiations are for season two and going forward, but he should definitely get something for those seasons at least. Yeah, but it's true. I mean, the way it works here in America, the contracts are the contracts, and it's almost like you almost got to sign it just to get the chance right. to blow up. Yeah, 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 that's true. I mean, trust me. I mean, music artists signing unideal contracts is still prevalent to this day. Right, right. It's true. Somebody said Squid Game season two is not even going to work, man. Some things do not need sequels, man. It's almost like the Hangover franchise. The first one was great, but all the other hangovers, they were just money grabs. Are you guys excited about Squid Game season two? Jack, me and you, we watched the whole series. I, I am, guess are you? I am. I'm going to watch the whole thing. I got to, right? Like, I'm so uh, Do I'm you so think invested people are going to watch it because they know they have to? Just because the first one was so good and groundbreaking. But, like, do you actually think it's going to be, like, even, even, let's not say just as good, but even nine out of ten as good? Oh, nine out of ten as good? That's pretty high. I was saying, I was thinking like five out of ten as good. I was still going to watch it. I think, though, yeah. with much higher budgets, they'll probably take right. it to, to be more stupendous outside of the, the right. game room, the you game, know? The game's going to be crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. game's going to be like, uh, have different environments and maybe right. like a jungle inside of yeah, the box. Right. Personally, I would have been okay if the series just ended here. Right. I think season right, one. Because you're saying it went out on a high note, Yeah, right? it went out on a high note, and it kind of made this crazy impact. It's almost like... You know, size right. Gangnam style, like his second song. Like there was mother no way. Mother, father, gentleman. Yeah, mother, father, gentleman. Like no one remembers that song. Yeah, um, I, I didn't know that song existed. I think I'm yeah. excited for it. You know, I think they're going to take it to another place. And I think it's really interesting that Asian content is finally getting this like marquee treatment. Mm -hmm. But I hope that where the Asian content differs, differs from the Western content is that it's just not a cash money grab for the second, third, and fourth season. Right. Like they actually really dedicate themselves to making it at least equal in a different way right mm. i think asians do have that standard and that quality in their work so i think it will be really good yeah i, I believe so um somebody said uh you know as a white american i'm not gonna lie you could just remake the new season without any of the previous cast i'm just not even gonna care because i was just there for the story because obviously as an american i'm watching it in another language i don't really relate to the actors anyway oh this is a good point oh, wow. because listen a lot of americans still watch squid games dubbed not even with subtitles. They watched it dubbed in English, which... I mean, and, and I don't think they know Lee Jung Jae's name, to be no, honest. No, no, I don't think they know a lot of any of the actors' names. They just were watching a piece that was so crazy to right. them, and they're not invested into the character or the personality himself. Right, right. So That's I true. Guess, That's true. I, I could see their point, sense. you know? They, could be not, they might not even be Korean. They could be, like, Chinese. They wouldn't even know. No. Oh, yeah. No, no. no, to be honest, uh, obviously there's different segments within like the non-Asian population, but probably a, a sizable chunk. I don't know what percentage fall into that category. Right. Anyway, guys, let's get into our takeaways. Um, is it going to be a situation where 
Korean content is almost like Japanese cars in the 80s and 90s. If you guys have studied, you know, when Japanese cars and obviously nowadays in the more of the 2000s, Korean cars entered the market, Andrew, they were a better value than German and American cars. But I don't know if people put them on the same level, certainly as German cars. But they were always like, they're like, People buy more Hondas and Toyotas than any other car in America, right. but I don't know if they like value it the same. No. They value it because of the the price to quality ratio. Yeah, right. because the mileage that you could get out of a Toyota, the utility from a Toyota was way higher per dollar than a BMW. The BMW, reliability. Yeah, D D BMWs are really fun cars and really nice cars, but you also have to take them to the shop often. They cost much more when you first buy them, of Game course. Game of Thrones. Harder to fix. Yeah, right. yeah. BMW is kind of like Game of Thrones. Right. And then Squid Game is kind of like Toyotas or, or Kias now. Oof. And uh, Hyundai. So I guess... <laughs> But we don't say that in a bad way. Right. I'm not saying that a bad no, way. Right. Even though I, at, on a car you, channel. Okay, in the value yeah. way. No, no, no. To be fair, Squid Games was at least like the Hyundai Genesis. All right? Like, it's like the Genesis yeah. series. It's like the top level one. But, or are the iconic Ionic 6. Right. But Netflix partially does love it partially because of the strong ROI. Right. That's right. right. I guess, money uh, and over the years, Lexus sales, which is... Uh, you know, Toyota's premium line, that has begun to lag over the past like five years mm -hmm. of sales. So it kind of goes to show you, I, I wonder how much will Western people value Korean content? Do they value it at its price point or do they just value it just flat out altogether? All right, All right here, you guys want to hear my hot take? Until uh, there is a bona fide Western star from Korea that makes it in America, as You're in, saying a household name. That is, as in their name is being known and being able to be remembered by Americans. Right. I think that's when you start to see that shift. But until then, for now, it's kind of like a really good deal for Americans. Right. But I will say this. Some K-pop stars like BTS, Blackpink, musically, they are on that level that's where they're kind of getting a little bit more respect. Like, in general, they just are respected. They actually, some artists make more money performing in Asia than they do in the U.S., actually. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I could see that. Um, Andrew, what kind of comment do you have on just global capitalism in general from this? Do you think that that as something generates a lot more global revenues, that the revenues need to be split sort of, uh, you know, down the chain of command? All I don't the way know. down I to mean, the bottom. People, like, there needs to be some sort of trickle down. Yeah, but it's capitalism even in America. Like, let's take it out of the globe, you know. Most companies, they just only want to pay the least amount that they can to right. get the job done and retain the employees. It's true. You don't want employees leaving all at once because that's going to cost you a lot of money to rehire and the time. Yeah, but you want trains. to pay, you want, you're saying you want to find where their threshold is in global, in, in any sort of capitalism and just provide one notch above that. Yeah. Any business is doing that, actually. That's right. just how most business is done. Uh, if you're trying to maximize profit. So I, I think, unfortunately, global, global capitalism, I mean, but I, yeah, I think in, this is just wave one of the Korean Netflix wave, you know, the last four years. So I think that right. in the next five years, you're right, Jack, that they're going to get paid more. And I'm looking right. forward to it. So I that's mean, they, have, they might have competitors, HBO, Hulu. They might come into play and be like, oh, Netflix is putting two point five billion. We might need to come in with our own money. Yeah. So, and no. you know what I hope? I hope that as long as the Korean content or just Asian content in general stays profitable, they can pay more people to the actors, to the writers, to the producers, right. all the way down the line. And those ROI equations might not look like as superstar as they were, like great, great. But as long as they look good, I think the Western companies will still go, well, this was still a good it's investment. It's still worth it. Yeah. yeah. It's still yeah. worth it. Yeah. And, and you're right. Uh, I, I don't think like Korean content always has to be this almost like dollar dumpling version of, of, of content, you know, where Chinatown cheap eats. It's like, you're just getting an incredible deal. But, but I, I thought the say, Asians are always known for value. Right. Not well, I, 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 think, changing. I do think it is in Asians to care about value. I think deep down Asians know that's like the right thing to do. But anyways, I will say this guys, have you seen the recent NBA contracts? of some of the, the free agents that just signed. Right. Guys, so I'm just saying, this is capitalism right now. You got Desmond Baines. Desmond Baines making, signed a $207 million contract. Desmond yeah, Baines. Oh, you, know, from, uh, you know from, who that is? From Grizzlies. From, from the Grizzlies, right? but With he's the short not a household yeah. name. That's crazy. Hey, shout out to Tyrese Halliburton. 260 is, is a lot for Tyrese no, Halliburton. But I'm, I'm not he's mad good, that the he's NBA good. players are making enough. It doesn't take any money out of my pocket, but I'm just saying this is capitalism here. So they make a bunch of money. They're making more than like the entire WNBA times three. Hey, right. shout out to Lee Jung-Jae. You know, shout out to um, Young Hook. 
And uh, man, go get your money. Yeah, All right, everybody. Yo, Jack, thanks for being here with us. And until next time, everybody, we out. Peace. Peace.